to hold it for pictures, and then you can sure. do whatever you want with them. I'm taking a quick video, so... Oh yeah, okay, well, you know, okay. well I'll start yeah, here uh, for keeping the bike lanes on Jarvis. Let's but keep the lanes. Keep the lanes. Keep the lanes. Yeah, it's like the weddings will be, um, I think, Shinto, but, but like the funerals will be Buddhist. Really? Do you want to renew today? Get it for $20 to $40? Take time. Take introduce a resident uh, in the area. Her name's June McDonald. Give it up for June. Yes, yes! Hi, Good afternoon. Wow. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm here to represent uh, Louder. Louder. A, lo a long time resident of the area. I lived at the corner of Jarvis and Carlton for the past 25 years and until the bike lanes went in last year I wasn't able to use those bike lanes and now I use them practically every day to go shopping to go to appointments whatever whatever it, it really, really makes a difference. I, I just want to say that around this area about 75% of the people do not drive to work and in my condo Half the cars are there all day long because people are using other ways of getting around. So there's a mythology that the gas tax pays for the road, but it comes out of our property and rental taxes. So we're all paying for the roads and we all should be able to use it to get around in our community. This is really densely populated area. We need to get around. Thank you. <laughs> uh, next up, I'd like to introduce Councillor Shelley Carroll, who's going to say a few words. <laughs> there you go. I, I have authority 
issues. I just wanted to see if I could use that siren. Um, where's Councillor Fletcher? The Fletch is going to ride with you. Where'd she go? Wait, yeah. Fletch. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> so, uh, why am I here? I'm, I'm, I'm the councillor from north of the 401. Well, today is Toronto East Community Council. The councillors from the, the, the part of our cycle plan around here uh, had community council today. They were doing that work. I saw them work together and, and more efficiently than ever because they knew there was a bike rally. Paul is here. Uh, Chris Wong Tam is going to be waiting for you when you get to Nathan Phillips Square. I'm kind of glad that I got to come because I wanted to, to tell you that this is a fight. It's coming right up in Nathanville Square. I want you to pedal all the way to NPS because Kristen's going to tell you exactly when the next step is. She's going to tell you exactly where we need your bodies to be to win this next month. But I wanted to also tell you to keep rallying all summer and to keep going out there and looking for your natural partners in this community. We got a problem with one of the, the trailways in this plan out in the suburbs near where I live. I went out to meet with the people saying no cycling infrastructure here. And when I got to the site, what was sitting right beside the site being protested? The community garden full of gardeners. Those are your partners. Go talk to them. Help us finish this plan all over the city. The gardeners, the farmers markets, the children's programs, those are active parents who want cycling infrastructure to be there when those kids are there. We have the potential for my kid to be able to pedal from Young Street to Seneca College out there without ever, without ever thinking about being threatened by a car. But we need you to go out there and find the people in the community who will rally with you. Every cyclist, but everyone with sympathy for the cyclists and a passion for cycling. Find your supporters, find our supporters. We gotta get it done by finding all our partners. That's a summer's job. When we're all outside, that's when we'll find each other. Help me with that task. Have a good ride tonight. <laughs> My battery is running out, we cannot hold me later. Uh, My battery is dead already. Well, welcome back Toronto. Yeah. It's been nearly a year since we were here last. We stood under these trees, we rode on Jarvis, we protested the slated removal of the Jarvis Street bike lanes. Woo! A year's passed, and what's changed? The bike lanes are still there. Woo! What have we learned? We've learned that collision rates across the board have gone down since the Jarvis Street bike lanes were installed on these streets. We've learned that the cost to rip them out and replace that fifth reversible turning lane is over a quarter million dollars. <laughs> We've learned that the street is working for everyone. The street is safer than it was three years ago. It's safer than it was two years ago. And we know that this decision that's been put on the table wants to see this street turn back into a highway. We can change this. This is one thing we can see overturned. Cycle Toronto has been working really, really hard on this. We put a request to the city for an environmental assessment. Why? Because, <laughs> because these bike lanes, the decision was made without any due process, without any public consultation. We want to see the, the public consulted with before this street is turned back into a highway. The city, of course, said, well, sorry, we're not interested in doing an environmental assessment. So we've gone on to the province. We want to see the province issue orders for an environmental assessment on this very street. We, don't, we haven't heard anything from the province, but that's where it's at. So tonight we ride. It's a year later, we're a year stronger. Cycle Toronto's over 20, almost 2,400 members strong. Tonight, we ride for Jarvis. We ride for Toronto. We'll see you at City Hall. Oh,
It's a great crowd. It is a great crowd. And a beautiful day. Beautiful day. We're going to come straight up the... Uh, yeah. This is the spot to be for sure.
Uh, we've, uh, we've got a few items on the agenda. Uh, Councillor Kristen Wong Tan is here to say a few words. Uh, we've got uh, Dave Medlin here who's going to say a few words. And we've also got uh, a little surprise for everybody, uh, which uh, we've got in store right after the speeches. So, stay tuned. I'd like to introduce Councillor Wong Tan. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm sorry I wasn't able to join you for the ride this uh, evening, although it's a perfect, perfect day for it. I, uh, I see strength in numbers, and uh, today certainly the uh, the crowd is here, and I can see that this uh, that this particular group is mobilized and ready to take particular action. I say, are you ready for action? Yeah. I, uh, I suspected as much. You know, I want to give you a little bit of, of information. Um, there was a meeting on April the 3rd. It was held at Jarvis Collegiate. And that meeting was called the Jarvis Cultural Corridor Meeting, which we held in War 27. That meeting was attended by close to 150 residents, as well as business owners from the ward and from beyond. It was represented uh, very well by at least six resident associations from the immediate neighborhood. And, uh, and many people filled out a survey. We received 120 completed surveys that set out some strategic priorities for us for Jarvis in the upcoming future. Would you like to know what those priorities are? Yeah. This is what came out of that consultation meeting. There were at least three high-level priorities that folks said that we must work on. Number one, they wanted to ensure that we were going to repurpose Jarvis as a cultural corridor just as it was identified in the 2001 waterfront plan when we said that Jarvis was an important cultural street in Toronto along with uh, Young and John Street. That was part of the city's uh, strategic policy and planning direction and that is going to be the direction for War 27. That should be the direction for Jarvis Street with your help. importance for, for the residents uh, is that Jarvis needs to be a green corridor and that was very clear overwhelmingly people said they wanted the quality of life on Jarvis to be green and the air to be clean that the pedestrians need to be able to walk through a more enhanced and beautiful streetscape and that that streetscape needed to reflect the diversity of the city by ensuring beauty, art, and culture, and remembering this important street for what it is, which has historical significance. So that's number two. There has to be a significant greening environmental strategy on Jarvis, determined by you. The third priority, the one that seemed to have been the overarching priority that began in discussions years before was the removal of the fifth lane and ensuring that the fifth lane did not come back by ensuring a livable, greener, more sustainable, pedestrian-friendly street. So the removal of the fifth lane was a community priority. And then the flip of that, on the opposite side of that discussion, was the retention of the Jarvis bike lanes. because you are here on bicycles or because you're cycling advocates. I'm telling you this as a ward councillor I've heard from my community and this is what they're looking for from me in terms of leadership at City Hall. People have said, and these are residents in my ward, and I can tell you that I can list the six neighborhood associations that showed up and represented themselves that night. There's the Bloor East Neighborhood Association, and this is for the press. The Upper Jarvis uh, resident Association, the Church Wellesley Neighborhood Association, Woo! thank you, the, the Bay Clover Hill Community Association, the Garden District Resident Association, the Moss Park Resident Association. That's six neighborhood associations, all within the immediate vicinity and catchment, all surrounded by Jarvis. That is a significant message, not just to myself, and not just to this crowd who's, who's gathered here today, 
but also it should be a message clearly sent to City Hall that this is what the residents and business owners of Ward 27 want. You have been very, very patient considering where we began this discussion last year. Incredibly patient. There's been many things that have taken place around discussions of Jarvis that have not been fair. They have not been equitable. They have not been respectful. I'd like to bring that discourse back to City Hall. I'd like to ensure that we have an honest conversation on how we build our city, how we actually improve our neighborhoods, and how we actually improve that street, which is so important to every single one of us. I have a draft letter to Minister Bradley, who is the Minister of the Environment, is a cabinet minister, sits at Queen's Park. What I'm asking Minister Bradley for is very simple. I'd like him to call to initiate a Class C environmental assessment, which will at least bring us some open, transparent consultation, if nothing else. <laughs> Now, there are folks who said that they weren't consulted at the beginning of the process. And then there are folks here who said, you weren't consulted like myself in, 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 in May. So let's have that consultation. I held a very localized consultation on April the 3rd that brought out 150 people. I'm willing, and I think you are, ready to have an open, clear, honest discussion about the future of Jarvis Street. One that incorporates the concept of complete streets, one that, pr uh, that prioritizes heritage, a greening strategy, and keeping out the reversible fifth lane and keeping the bike lanes. Let's do that together. I'm ready to work with you. I'm ready to work with anybody in that building. I'm ready to work with anyone that's willing to improve our street, our neighborhood, and our city. Thank you very much. On behalf of all of us, Kristen has really been leading the way on this and showing what's possible in terms of reaching out to the public and getting feedback and opinions from the people who actually use this street, whether that's pedestrians or drivers or cyclists. So thank you very much for all that. Um, this, is, uh, this is City Hall, folks. The reason this building exists is not just for city councillors to meet. There's only 45 of them. They could do that at the Starbucks in the corner. The reason this building is here is to create an opportunity for the public, us, to interact with public decision making at the municipal level. That's why it's here. We have things called committees. There's community councils and standing committees. Sorry, I stutter sometimes, especially on C's. The way the committees work is that you put an item on the agenda, which lets people know what you're gonna talk about at the meeting. And then any citizen is allowed to come and speak for five minutes on any item, which gives the councilors feedback into the municipal process. What happened a year ago is that they decided to take out the bike lanes on Jarvis without any consultation at all. A motion was moved, a motion was moved in July out of the blue, not only at a meeting where Jarvis wasn't on the agenda, but at a meeting after everyone had spoken, after the public had come to speak. And some people will tell you that that's exactly what happened two years earlier. That is a lie. It was on the agenda. People knew what the options were. Some people came out in favor. Some people came out against. Council made an informed decision. A year ago, the public was completely excluded. No one had a chance to give feedback, and that is completely unfair. And that's why we're here today to demand fair process. Now, it's not only enough. It's not only enough for us to know what we want. It's an important in any political campaign to preempt and anticipate what your opponent's messages will be. I want you all to know what their message will be in the next two and three months. Their message will be, are you ready? Cyclists are being unreasonable. What? They're being unreasonable about this and we're trying to be reasonable with them and they won't be reasonable. Why? They're not being reasonable because they have other routes they can already bike on. They can bike on Sherbourne. They can bike on, on who knows where. And our answer to that has to be, well, hey, let's rip out the sidewalks then too. He can walk on Sherbourne. Why do you need sidewalks on, uh, on Jarvis? 
every street where you have enough width, you put in a bike lane. Because people ride bikes on every street in Toronto. And for people in Kristen's ward who live on Jarvis and work on Jarvis and go to school on Jarvis, what does the Sherbourne bike lane offer them? Potholes. That's true, it offers them potholes. And for a variety of reasons, some people don't feel safe at night riding on Sherborne, which I think is quite fair, and there's lots of reasons why Jarvis needs a bike lane. Okay, the second thing they're going to say is, we're being unreasonable because there's a trade-off happening. There's a trade-off. We're losing Jarvis, but we're getting a whole bunch of brand new bike lanes. That is a lie. There are no new bike lanes going in in the downtown. They're fixing up some bike lanes, which is fantastic. They're redoing Sherborne. They're going to redo some others. None of them are new. We're not getting a single meter of new bike lanes anywhere. There is no trade-off. It is a huge net loss. There is nothing more reasonable than our position, because our position is simply this. We want to share the street. That's it. There's four lanes now for cars, two for bikes. We don't want more. We're not saying kicks the cars off the street. We just want to share. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Okay, I want to give you two or three very quick things you can do. Take out your pens and pencils and your iPhones and your Blackberries and your Evernotes and your notepads, etc. Write down this phone number. Ready? Wave your pens in the air. Who's got a pen? Let me see it. Okay, 416. I have to wait. Are we okay, Jerk? Three nine two zero two one five. That's the phone number of an office of a man named John Parker. Councillor John Parker is a decent guy, and he's actually stood up on some really important issues this year, including transit, and he's done a great job when he's been the speaker at council. But he's the one who moved that motion a year ago with no consultation, saying let's rip out the bike lanes on Jarvis. And at that meeting, I was there, Councillor Layton said, Mr. Parker, do you support having consultation for this? And he said, and this is online, I quote, I have no quarrel with that. An hour later when the vote came down, he voted against consultation. It was his motion, and I want you to all phone his office tomorrow. He'll either speak with... Uh, Ishratha, Joan, Kate, or Virginia, and in a very nice, polite, and kind way, please tell Councillor Parker's staff that you resent the fact that they are threatening the safety of cyclists on Jarvis with no consultation, and as a citizen, as a taxpayer, you want to have consultation. Please do that tomorrow. It makes a big difference when councillors hear from people. Okay, I'm almost done, because we're about to do something really, really exciting. Um, there's a group that's been set up called the Jarvis Emergency Task Force. You might have seen them on Twitter. And they sent out a tweet today that says that uh, essentially what they're doing is if it comes down to the fact that they actually start removing the bike lanes without consultation, there are cyclists in Toronto, including myself, we're prepared to put our bodies down on the street, block those trucks, block those crews. Because if the city isn't prepared to use the proper democratic process, we'll use other means possible to stop this. And I'm prepared to do that. How many other people are prepared to do that? This is what you have to do. They have set up an automatic texting service. So if crews start to rip out the bike lanes on Jarvis, text messages go out automatically to let you know where and when to go. This is how you sign up. You text the word Jarvis to 393939. You can do that on your cell phones right now. The last thing you can do is join Cycle Toronto. And they have, they've done an amazing thing today. Who, who heard that today Dollarama raised their prices? It's true. Right now the most expensive thing at Dollarama is $2. Starting in July, they're going up to $3. That is inflation, folks. That's a 50% increase. Today, Jared Kolb and Cycle Toronto have done the exact opposite. A $30 annual subscription today, just for you, my friends. 20 bucks. There are folks wearing these orange shirts. You can sign up. It's because of Cycle Toronto that we're here. It's because of Cycle Toronto that this issue is still on the agenda. And it'll be because of us together and Cycle Toronto that we're going to win this and Councillor Wong Tan this summer. So please join. Thanks for being here. I'm going to pass this back to Jared for a very fun, interactive activity. Okay, events like this don't
don't happen without committed volunteers. There's a few people I need to single out. Linda Young, where are you? <laughs> Linda. Hey, Linda. This is Linda Young, this is this is Linda Young group. Protesters, lovers, haters, everyone. Here's Linda. Um, she has worked tirelessly on this. This wouldn't happen without her. There's a bunch of other people. Gareth Davies, where are you? Gareth's around. Danny Brown. Sorry, Danny Brown. There's there's so many people. Um, so it, the the Ward 27 group has been instrumental in this. So please give it up for our volunteers. They made it happen. I've got a message from Linda that says if you want to get involved in the campaign, it's Jarvis at bikeunion.to. Jarvis at bikeunion.to. Email that off and let's let's keep her rolling. So there's a few volunteers as well here, Renata and Barney that have artistically drawn out this gorgeous Jameis bicycle right beneath your feet, in chalk. You can see the lines around you. Now, what we want to do is we want to get people on that bike, standing on that bike, and on those, those lines alone. So if you can get on one of those lines, what we want to do is get, get on there. Um, we're going to try and get a photograph from above of a human bicycle. It's a human bicycle. So, this is going to be a little confusing, so patience is required. You can see the line. should move the litter thing here. your bikes. Thank <laughs> you. 